How's it going everyone? Mountain Spider here, bringing another episode in the Pokemon TCG series. So today is very much more of a relaxed video, talking about the changes that are coming to Pokemon TCG come February with a new rule set coming in with um, Sword and Shield, and seeing how it actually is going to change and affect the game. So I'm going to be having a game at the same time as running through the rules on my phone, uh, just so at least we can actually see a game being played as well as get information on the rules. So, if you're not aware, Pokemon released this information about a week ago now that there's going to be changes coming to the rule set for Pokemon TCG come February. Um, this announcement was actually on the 9th of January this year. So, probably the biggest change, well, one of the big changes is that the new VMAX Pokemon are coming in with Pokemon having more than 300 HP. Which is quite crazy, especially for basic Pokemon. Um, and so the HP creep really is happening. And then on top of that, one of the big changes that I actually want to talk about today, um, let me just see what I want to do quickly, is I might want to actually not care about Mew and go straight off the Gibble because the KO on Mew doesn't actually do anything for me. So let's go for a Nest Ball. Oh, I should have done that the other way around because now I can't do Guzma. I can't do Guzma, I can't do Gibble. That was a bit of a mistake. Anyway, um, okay, then let's do this. Nest Ball, let's bring out the Snova. Next turn, I can drop the Copycat, which is great. Let's go for the damage. Okay, so as I was saying, one of the big changes is the fact that there's going to be a rule change by first turn. So when X and Y came out, the first turn changed that you can no longer attack on the first turn. That being said, there's still a huge advantage to going first in the sense that you got the first energy drop and you got the first Pokemon evolution. Now, come Sword and Shield, the first turn is going to get another nerf in the sense that you're going to now not be able to play any supporter cards on the first turn. Now, this gives a huge advantage to the player who goes second because it allows them to do a lot of setups. And you might end up with a lot of first turns where the person essentially just passes. Um, what are the chance of me drawing into a grass energy? These, I want to get a risk of one, one hit KO. So let me rather do this. Get one more down for good measure and let's copycat. So uh, the logic I was going was swapping out Electric for, for Grapple, but I don't think that was a safe play. Uh, not a necessary play. Okay, so this gives a huge advantage to the player going second in the sense that they can still use supporter cards. Um, so it's going to be very interesting seeing how the meta does shift according to that. Um, you may see a lot more decks focused around rather going second and being able to get the first attack off, which is huge, as well as being able to get the first supporter cards off. So it's going to be very interesting seeing how the game mechanics shift and how the deck building shifts based on this change. And ironically, in terms of my channel, this surprisingly gives a very big buff to this Leaf Charge deck that I'm playing at the moment. And that comes from the fact that this deck runs off going second very, very well because of a card like Manectric, which if it's in your opening hand, you actually end up dealing a lot more damage. Um, on that sense, I want to bring Manectric right back. And the reason I'm saying that is because of Manectric's Pokemon ability, which is if you go second and this Pokemon is in your hand while it's looking up to play, you may put face down as you active Pokemon. Now that's a huge advantage. Um, if you get a lucky start, unfortunately I did not get a very lucky start, um, but you can start, uh, damn that's a big problem. You can really start just bulldozing your opponent. And it's gonna be interesting seeing how many other decks and how many other Pokemon really start to shine when it comes to their Pokemon abilities allowing them to give a bonus to the player for going second. Um, so that is quite a nice big change that's coming to the game. I'm very interested to see how it happens. I do hope the Pokemon TCG Online's rules do change at the same time as the physical TCG change. 
I expect those changes, but I haven't seen a confirmation for it just yet. So I really am holding thumbs there that those changes occur at the same time. Um, as for this game that's happening at the moment, I'm not feeling too great about it. I felt quite good in the start. Now, however, unless I got a draw card, which I did not, I'm rather concerned. I might have to pay f uh, pray for the paralysis game. Um, because I don't actually know if putting this energy on bomb snow is going to help me. But I'd rather do that. Okay, I really want to copycat right now. So, that was the first change that's happening, is with the rule change where now, going first, you can no longer attack, which has always been the case, and now, sorry, you can no longer play supporter cards, which is a huge change, and I'm quite interested to see what happens about it. The next change coming over is the weaknesses and resistances are changing slightly. So, let me just play out my turn quickly. Manek tried, a dead card, lovely. Okay, so, um, for quite a while now, the resistances have been negative 20 damage, so 20 less damage. And with the introduction of Sword and Shield, they're going to be going back to minus 30. If I remember, if I remember correctly from way back in the day, from the start of Pokemon, it was negative 30. Um, and it looks like they're going back to that. Okay, this is actually pretty good because I can use Guzman to bring out Seismitoad to buy me some time. Um, so going back to the negative 30 resistance, it's interesting, it's going to make a lot of changes and deck typings are going to be very important. So I think it, it could be a pretty good change. Ah, oh, damn, I'm dead. Okay. And on top of that, there's a very, very big shift happening. And that's in terms of weaknesses. Now, oh my word. This is a terrible game. In terms of weaknesses, water type Pokemon are, are now going to be weak to lightning rather than uh, grass and the very half half, some are grass, some are lightning. It's now going to be changed across to just lightning across the board by the sounds of it. And the second type that's going to be changing is psychic. Psychic is no longer going to be weak against itself, against psychic. It is now going to be, um, it is now going to be weak to darkness to dark type pokemon which is quite a nice buff to dark type pokemon and dark type pokemon are no longer going to be weak against fighting now they're going to be weak against grass so now this really does throw throw a cog in the works for a lot of the decks that are really built at the moment and it's going to be interesting seeing how decks develop in the future with these new type advantages and apparently i did not have any luck today with these games but it does happen so that is the, s the second change that's coming in now. The differences to resistance, being negative 30, and the differences to weaknesses. Water is now weak to lightning, psychic is now weak to uh, darkness, and darkness is now weak to grass. Um, there's also going to be a very big type rearrangement. Fairy type is going. There will no longer be any fairy type uh, Pokemon printed. They are being moved over to the psychic type. So they're being incorporated into psychic, and fairies no longer go fairy typing is no longer going to be printed. Um, and to maintain the balance among the types, Pokemon that are now poison types in the game will be represented as darkness type Pokemon rather than psychic type Pokemon. So they've got that changeover from um, the different typings. Uh, let's go for Lily because reasons. Ugh, I'm not liking this at all. Luckily, I'm going to get a two-hit KO against this Farfetch, which is something, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's going to be quite interesting seeing that they're going to be shifting Poison-type Pokemon to Darkness types, which I quite like, and they're going to be changing Fairies over to Psychic. Shame, my opponent got really unlucky there with no Tumble Balls, which they really need right now. Um, and so for the time being, Basic Fairy Energy can still be used in standard format, but that may change in the future. So they may be phasing out Fairy-type Energy. Okay, there are also a lot of cards that are going to be changing. Um, I honestly might copycat this hand. Yep, it's a dead hand. I'm actually going to copycat it. I can't use this hand. Um, so there's a lot of card changes that are coming to the game. And so I have to play this out. 
So the first up is going to be energy retrieval. And with regards to energy retrieval, um, it is now changing that you can put up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Now, giving you the option to put up to rather than taking two is a significant change because it allows you to only take one if you only want one. And that stops you from polluting a hand of cards you don't actually want or need and allows you to get better draws off. So in terms of playability, I think it's definitely a good change because it gives the player options, which is always a good thing. Um, next up is Lumberry. So Lumberry's change is that uh, it is now happening at the end of the turn. So at the end of each turn, if the Pokemon that this card is attached to is affected by any special conditions, it recovers from all of them. So this happens ra um, rather than happening between turns, it is now happening at the end of the turn. Okay, um, I actually don't want to waste time on this one. I'd rather start putting damage on one of the Pokemon. This is why I love, absolutely love the Manic Trick in this deck. Zero retreat cost. In fact, this can be your active Pokemon if you go second. And then on top of that, um, it just has that zero retreat cost. The amount of plays you can have for this Pokemon is phenomenal. Uh, it really is one of my favorite cards in this deck. And it's just going to get better, like I said. So Lumberry now triggers at the end of the turn. This helps clear up some of the confusion and it just it makes for better ease of play, which is I think a fairly good change. Pearl Pad is changing so with the same change that the energy retrieval had. You may now do up to two supporter cards from discard pile back into your deck. Again, this gives you options. Do not force to put two. Uh, so if there's a supporter card that you don't actually want, you're now not forced to take it which is a fairly good change. Okay, um, this is looking a little bit awkward right now, but it's okay, we can do this. Let's do that, let's get an attack off. Okay, that is now Pearl Pad done. Again, it's an up to, it is an up to change, and that is an ease of access play, and I think it's gonna make a lot of the plays, a lot of the clutch plays where you don't actually want to pollute your deck with your hand, this comes in really handy. Okay, Citrus Berry again, another minor change. It now also procs at the end of each turn. Again, this is a bit of an ease of access. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Let me just sack this at the moment. It's another ease of access change. Hey, that's actually pretty. Oh man, I forgot he can't take damage this turn. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to charge up Snova. So again, it's a bit of an ease of access change, but it clarifies when things happen, and that's always a good thing. All right, Hyper Potion. Hyper po Potion is changing quite a bit. Now Hyper Potion will read, heal 120 damage from one of your Pokemon that has at least two energy attached. If you healed any damage this way, discard two energy. So this means that you can only actually use it when your Pokemon already has two energy, and then you have to discard the, that, those energies. Well, those two energies. So, uh, quite a big change for Half Potion. And because of this change, I do not think the old Half Potion will be legal. So you'll be forced to use the new one. Quick Ball is also changing. And it's changing to, you can play this card, sorry, you can play this card only if you discard another card from your hand. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Uh, this is quite a nice change rather than revealing cards on the top of your deck and it should be a good change, a change for the better. Uh, I might want to hold on to a bomb snow because my opponent's deck doesn't actually punish me from cards in my hand and I want to try and hold off on a bomb snow until I can get a grass energy because this Trico might actually have to go in and do some work. I am getting terrified of this game because my draws are looking really bad and my opponents are looking really good. All right, so those are the erratas that are coming into the game on most of the cards. All of the versions will be legal for use in tournament play, but older ones will be played as if they had the updated text. So you can still use your old cards. You're not going to go after, You're not going to have to go out and buy new versions. However, your card will be played with the new rules, not with the text that is currently on the card. So do keep that in mind. If you are taking these older cards to tournament play. Um, 
you will have to use the new rules. So unfortunately my opponent got agility off again, which is rather frustrating. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go for a smack because reasons, it's not going to do any damage. Okay, there's quite an interesting change coming across to the professors in the sense of how the professors are going to be named in the future. So, from now on, professor cards are going to have a standard format. They're going to constantly be called professor's research is going to be the name of the card. And then in smaller print next to it is going to be the professor's name. So this helps keep all the official card names standardized with simply different versions being printed later down the road. And how it is now going to be working is that you're going to draw up to seven cards. That is the wording on the card and that is the ruling that it's going to be. So let's go for the Bomber Snow. I would like my energy, please. The problem is I'm going to get wrecked next turn either way. So let's go for the Dunsparce. And Bomber Snow, let's go and at least finally knock out this Rapidash. Okay. As long as my opponent has one energy, I'm dead. So, um, this is quite a big change because now that there's going to be one version of the Professors. And this also just helps because now uh, with regards to like the extended format, you can now only have a set number of professors research in your deck. Rather than having to say you can only have X number of Professor Sycamores and X number of Professor Junipers in the same deck, it's now just going to be one format. What this does mean is that the professor's research is most likely not going to be changing for a couple of for a long time. So professors now are just going to have you um, discard your hand and drop to seven cards. That is what the professors are going to do in the future. All right. There's also going to be a new stage of the game introduced, a new phase uh, for the game introduced, and that's going to be the Pokemon checkup stage. Also, I've completely lost this game, so <laughs> I'm only half paying attention to it at this stage. So, Professor, Professor, Pokemon checkup is now going to be coming um, in between phases. Strike around search deck for up to the basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Shuffle the deck. Okay. Um, the thing is, I really want to do that to bring out a uh, Trico, but the problem is <laughs> that doesn't actually even help me. I'm rather just going to troll the guy and hopefully go for sudden flashes and get a paralysis off. Yeah, I got a paralysis off. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so Pokemon checkup. This is actually a little more important than this bad game. This now happens in between turns. So the Pokemon checkup essentially happens at the end of your turn. When you do Pokemon checkup, the first thing you do, you've got to do it in this order. There's a slight change, but you basically follow through this order. You check for special conditions in this order. You first resolve poisoned, then you resolve burned, then asleep, then paralyzed. Once you've completed that step, you move over to the next step, which is you check abilities and effects of trainer cards that happen during Pokemon checkup. You can choose to do the step before checking special conditions. However, you can't mix the two steps. So for example, oh hey, I drew a Trico. So for example, you can't check for poisoned, then go back to a stadium or trainer card, and then go back to burned. Uh, if you're going to check for special conditions, you must finish checking for special conditions and then move on uh, to checking effects, uh, Pokemon abilities and trainer effects. You can't um, do half and then do half. You've got to completely resolve special conditions, then completely resolve Pokemon abilities. Um, which I think is quite a nice change. It, again, it gives more clarity to it and it clearly defines how the game progresses and having that clear definition of phases does always help um, and then the last stage is you check if anything gets knocked out so uh, to recap that you check for special conditions poison burn asleep paralyzed in that order you can then check pokemon abilities or trainer cards you can change the order in which you do special condition or trainer cards or abilities but you must completely resolve that step before moving on to whatever your next step is. And then your third and final step at the end of your turn is to check to see if your Pokemon was knocked out. All right. So as for 
the next part of it. There is going to be a few terms which are going to be a bit more standardized across play. And one of those terms is going to be recover. Now, back in the black and white series, the term heal was introduced. For example, the, um, the card potion says heal three damage for one of your Pokemon. Prior to that, it was removed three damage counters. And let me shuffle my hand quickly. Um, for Sword and Shield series, a similar term will be introduced for the effects of removing special conditions. I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going. So, as an example, so going forward, this term will be recover. So it's now going to be recover rather than remove a special condition. Which again, it's a clarity change, but it does come in handy. So as an example, the card Pokemon Center Lady has been updated in the Sword and Shield to say, heal 60 damage from one of your Pokemon and it recovers from all special conditions. It's a clarity change. It's now ease of reading. It makes it life a little easier. It still has the same effect, but now the word recover can be associated with special conditions, just as heal is associated with damage. So they're going for clarity in all these changes. All right, reminder text removal. In the past, abilities that could be used during your turn included the reminder text saying before your attack. To clarify that attacking was the last thing you could do in a turn. Starting with sword and shield, that reminder text won't appear anymore. In some cases, that reminder text could cause the text to be incorrect, since there are some abilities that can be used during the effects of an attack. Uh, yeah, so let's take that. All right. Let me just bring in quickly. Uh, I didn't actually see if it got the. Uh, let me see quickly. I didn't actually see if it got agility off. I hope it didn't. Oh damn! It got agility off. Okay. Let's retreat into this gravel. Let's play this bomber snow. Let's put this. Let's get this energy going. Onto there. Let's get this energy going over there. Let's get this going over here. The problem is I've lost this because my opponent's down to one prize card, which is really frustrating. Um, so it doesn't really matter what I do in this sense because I can't kill this Rapidash. And this Rapidash is about to end my life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch into a Ranguru just to frustrate my opponent. I am then going to do nothing else because I don't think there's anything else I can really do. Um, I literally need to draw another switch next turn or a Guzma or something like that just to stay in the game because unfortunately I can't even charge this up quick enough. Uh, I'm just gonna go done. Okay, so sorry, back to what's actually important. The reminder text removal. The text is not gonna appear anymore. In some, in some cases that reminder text could cause the text to be incorrect since there are some abilities that can be used during the effects of attacks. For example, if you use Persian GX's slash back GX attack and then switch it with Heatran GX, Heatran GX's burning road ability activates when it becomes active even though that happens during the attack. To prevent this confusion altogether, this reminder text will be removed in Sword and Shield. Again, they are aiming for clarity, which I approve of. They, all, they are also going to be bringing in regulation marks. So you may notice that cards from the Sword and Shield series have a white box containing the letter in the bottom left corner. For example, all cards in Sword and Shield expansion have the mark D on them. So for some reason they're skipping A, B, and C. But regardless of that fact, that is what's happening. Sorry for that terrible game. This is called a regulation mark and will be used in the future to determine which cards are legal to use in tournament play. For example, there might be a point in time uh, when only cards with a D regulation mark can be used in standard format. This change will, be get, will get more attention in the future, but for now, just take note that it is there. This change really does just help regulate what cards can be used in standard and it eases the, um, the rotation format. So if you're familiar with, for example, Magic the Gathering, there is a standard rotation that happens. Sets fall out after a year. Cards fall out after a year. This is a way that Pokemon can do the exact same thing. Uh, it just helps regulate. No, I don't want to take a mulligan. Oh, I actually really want to take a mulligan. Ugh. Ugh. I regret my life choices. Okay, I really need to draw into basic Pokemon. I just realized I don't actually have a anything. Um, anyway. So this 
these regulation marks do just help keep the Pokemon format standard, and it just eases with rotations. There are lots of new things to learn in the Pokemon TCG Sword and, Se Sword and Shield series. This is only the beginning, and there may be more changes and updates as more expansions get released. Be sure to check back at Pokemon TCG for all the latest news. All this information does come from straight from the Pokemon TCG site. So if you're looking for that information, that is where you can find it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm literally going to be drawing two cards with Lily, which is really disappointing. I might just drop experience here just to draw an extra card. Oh, come on. Okay, let's use Ultra Ball. Let's get rid of this Manic Track. Let's get rid of this energy. Man, that's frustrating. I really want a Snova. Let's get Snova down. Oh, this is frustrating because I did not draw a lightning energy. So, if I'm not mistaken, the Pokemon Sword and Shield TCG game comes out in the just off the second week in Japan. And like I said, hopefully they're gonna be rolling out these changes on the online version as well. I'll say that because I don't really play the physical version anymore. Unfortunately, where I live, there are no clubs, no gaming centers. Uh, no game stores that I can play uh, the game in. Which is a bit unfortunate, but hey, life happens. Alright, so I drew a lady, which is great there. So I'm hoping these changes do come to the Pokemon TCG. If you've got any opinions on this, please do consider writing in the comments. What do you think of these changes? Do you think they're going to be coming to the Pokemon TCG online immediately? And let me know if, if there's any decks that you are aware of that are really going to benefit from these changes. I really will be interested to see what everyone thinks about the older theme decks, seeing if these changes will bring any life to them. Um, I know I do keep on harking on about the older theme decks. I just find it fun to use old rogue decks, use things that are out of the ordinary, and just doing something different. I mean, as much as I love the new decks, and don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy sitting down and playing with Towering Heights, sitting down and playing with Unseen Depths. They're great decks, and I really do enjoy using them. So it's not, it is no hate against those decks. Um, the reason I say this is because I like variability, and I like doing something different. And I think that when there's these options to be able to do different, it's very good for the game state. So yeah, let me know. I'm very curious as to how these changes are going to come in next month. Ah oh, man, I was really hoping you'd fall asleep there. At the moment, I do plan on basically just grinding out Pokemon coins for the next couple of weeks to try and get enough to buy the new theme decks that are coming in. I presume we're going to be getting the three starter theme decks uh, with Grookey, with Sobble, and with Cinderace. It's not Cinderace. Um, Skull Bunny. Sorry, Cinderace is the last form. With Skull Bunny. So I presume there's going to be the three basic starters theme decks. So I am quite keen for that. I want to try and pick up all three of them in the first week. Mm, I really wish this Uwen Guru had one more energy. But he doesn't. Okay. So I really do want to pick up those three as they come out. Um, start playing with them and see how they do. I will be doing reviews for those three decks as soon as they come out. And going through the decks, seeing what they're like, seeing how the cards work in the current meta. I'm very curious as to how it works. I'm really, really looking forward to the Grookey deck. We haven't had a good Leaf type deck in a long time, hence why I'm using a very old one. Uh, so I'm very curious as to what a Grass type deck is going to look like in the current meta. It might not be fantastic with the abundance of Charizard decks at the moment. Well, with the Charizard deck at the moment, Charizard Nether Queen deck. Um, so I don't know how abundant it's going to be, but let's see how it goes. I haven't actually looked at those deck lists yet. I'm really holding out until I get the online versions. I really want to do a first reaction to it and like experience that like, I want to say Christmas present feeling of looking at these new decks and be like, oh, this is awesome. So I've avoided 100% looking at those deck lists. 
um, for the pure sake of I want to experience them for the first time when I purchase them. So please don't leave spoilers in that sense. Uh, I've intentionally not looked at them and I'd like to keep it that way if I can. All right, so, so far this hand is actually looking all right. Put a fur fruit down in case I need a cheap swap in and a leg track in case I can get a uh, neck track going again. So unfortunately hypno arm's not actually gonna get the KO. But I think I'm gonna, oh, I don't really wanna go for the retreat. The retreat's very expensive. So uh, let me know if you're keen for the new sword and shield decks that are coming out. Uh, again, try not to spoil them, but if there's one you're leaning towards, do let me know. And if you want to leave a comment down below, let me know which deck you want to see reviewed first. Um, obviously, I'm going to take the time and work through all three of them. But if you're really excited about one of them, leave a comment down below and let me know which one you want to see first. I am still very undecided. I'm leaning towards the Grookey deck simply because I'm a huge fanboy of grass type Pokemon. So I'm certainly leaning in that direction. But yeah, let's see what the future holds. So this just won't get the knockout, but I honestly think I'm gonna go to Furfu. Just because I would rather not risk losing my Urun Guru to a swap in. I'm saving Urun Guru to get the KO on Necrozma because I know it's my easiest way to get that KO. And I just messed up putting the grass energy not on the Furfu because I'm too busy talking. So that was a nice big mistake. I'm not even gonna play Professor now because there's no point. So looking back to this Leaf Charge deck, it doesn't, I'm not getting the best win-loss ratio with it. I am definitely getting a positive ratio with it, but unfortunately it's not doing superbly. It's not stomping the opposition. There is an element of power creep to the game and I'm not certainly blaming it. Obviously I'm not the best player in the world, but there is certainly an element of power creep. And the newer decks are certainly more well refined and they certainly play better than the older ones, which naturally is understanding, as I said in previous videos. I have nothing against the Pokemon company for doing that, as it moves units. It makes complete sense. Anyone would do it. All right, so let me not make that mistake again. Let me actually charge up this Furfu correctly. Um, I would like to, I don't need to do a Professor this turn, actually. I'm not gonna do a Professor this turn. There's no real point. Let's just go for the return. I'll leave the Professor until when I need it which will most likely be next turn with this Necrozma coming in. Pokemon Stretcher, do I have a... I can use Pokemon Stretcher for, ironically for Snova even, which wouldn't be bad, or my neck trick. Both of which are not bad options. Um, the problem at the moment I'm sitting at is that my opponent's really powering up well and getting a lot of draws out while I'm not. And I... Okay, well now I can bring in Urunguru, at least. Opponent use special laser. Okay, so let's make sure I get this right. Six, eight, 10, 12, 140 with the professor. So let's go for Uranguru. Before I forget anything else, let's go straight into the professor. Take the damage off. I would love to draw a Gravel rather than a Skeptile. Pokemon Stretcher, I wanna go into Manectric. Put a Pokemon Discard Pile onto your hand. Yes, I wanna go for Manectric. I also like Manectric because it has the options with the zero retreat cost. Um, all right, let's charge it up. I think we're gonna get a second Manectric electric out just for now, Electric out just for now because I'm not too comfortable with my bench. And let's go for Psychic to get the KO. Nice thing is I, I won't get knocked out next turn unless he has another special energy in his hand, which is quite good. But overall, I must say, I really am enjoying this deck. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's something different. You've got to think quite a bit playing it. And especially trying to beat the newer decks, you really do have to pay attention. I've lost a few times by not thinking correctly against Unseen Death's deck. Um, I have a bad habit, which I guess I just did again now, of filling my bench with starter Pokemon, arguably too early and against the Unseen Depths deck, they can really punish that with the Printlap line because it can hit your bench. 
which is incredibly frustrating, especially for me who make that silly mistake very often. And it's a mistake I need to keep in mind against that deck. And honestly, oh my word, these draws. Honestly, that is the way you learn. You make those mistakes and it takes time, unfortunately. Um, I'm just gonna play this energy to charge up this. I don't wanna play it in case I get this bomb snow out, actually. Ooh, I don't know what to do. Let's go for Urungu, let's go for an attack. <sighs> I've got a very evolution heavy hand, which I don't like. Uh, I know, unfortunately, that, that attack was never going to get the knockout without a professor. Um, but it means I can come in with the Electric, <laughs> the Electric, the Manectric, and get the KO. Really, really hoping I draw into a Snova or a Grovel. The problem with Skeptar at the moment doesn't actually deal that much damage because I've got so few energy cards out, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, I've lost a lot of energies to my discard pile. Okay, come on. Let's see some draws. Okay, there's the Grovel and the Chincho. That's actually huge. I uh, don't think I'm going to lose my track next turn, which means Lantern's ability will actually come in handy. So let's get that going as well. Uh, let's go for double charge and get the KO. Alright, I don't want to do any energy cards. I'm now tied to a prize card from, with my opponent, which is a little scary. Um, my opponent does have this gumshoes in the background, which is going to swing out for 90 damage, um, which is always frustrating. And it's going to take me three turns to chew through this Odino with my neck track. Or two turns with a lantern, if I can get lantern online. Two, four, six, eight. I can't get the knockout of the skip tower next turn either. Two, four, six, eight. No, I won't get the knockout. Um, so I probably should have played that energy card, but I was just... The problem is the Lantern needs two lightning energies. And that is unfortunate now, because I'm going to have to go into Skip Tower just to survive. And Skip Tower is not going to get the KO. So this is going to be unfortunately a game. Um, and I didn't get the energy with the Lantern, which is a problem. <coughs> Bless me. I apologize. Alright. Snowbird coming in very late there, unfortunately. Um, yeah, this is going to be game. Because the problem is, my opponent's going to get an attack off next turn. Um, and they're down to one prize card, so this is going to be game. Unfortunately, this has been a rather bad day for Leaf Charge. Some bad draws, some bad plays. Uh, unfortunately, I actually need to sit down and focus a bit more on my plays. I feel like I've been making a lot of misplays recently, and I need to work on improving that. Uh, so if you do see any misplays on my behalf, please do let me know down in the comments below. Uh, the whole point of this channel is to learn, to grow as players, to learn more about the game, and to improve ourselves. We make those mistakes, and we learn from them. I really am a firm believer in learning from your mistakes. Uh, it's a difficult way to learn, but it is how you learn. Um, for instance, it's like I really do appreciate the comment a while back on how to correctly pronounce Kyogre. I had been making that mistake for years and thanks to someone that actually did end up correcting that, which I really do appreciate. So I'm actually going to go for the Abomber Snow Evolution here. Let's get the energy back. Let's get that onto Skip Tile. I'm going to retreat Skeptile into Lantern. I'm going to use Lantern to get the KO. Yeah, I'm going to get the KO with Lantern. I'm going to try and go down swinging. Um, the issue with doing that is that Lantern, by dropping those energies, my Skeptile is literally doing no damage now. Uh, two, four, six. Yeah, I only deal six damage next turn with Skeptile which is just not enough, unfortunately. And it'll take me two turns to get this Lantern back online. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to survive this. I don't think I can. Because unfortunately, whatever my opponent brings in... Yeah, I'm not going to have an answer for it. Yeah, this looks like it is game. 
I'm down to one prize card. Just can't finish cross the finish line, which is frustrating. But it happens. Um, there's no way I can do 100 damage on this next turn. And there was no way I was going to get that easy KO without doing it that way. So yeah, a uh, bit of an unfortunate day. I usually do get better luck with... Well, actually no, I usually tend to get terrible luck playing card games. Um, that is actually very interesting because I just won the game with the Guzma draw. Two for six. Two for six. Yeah, I've just won the game with the Guzma draw. Wow. I did not expect that. <laughs> Never give up, guys. That is what you call heart of the cards. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am happy with that. Leaf charge came out of nowhere. Pulled an amazing top deck. Okay. Ended up picking up the win. Um, and I got a boost out of it. Okay, I guess I can't complain. That was super, super lucky. Got an amazing draw, and yeah. So, I played that very badly. I should have lost that. Super lucky at the end there. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Um, let me see if I can see what these deck stats are with this deck. Just to give you an impression of what you would think of it. Uh, I would recommend picking it up. I'm loving playing it. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's a serious roller coaster. Alright, let's check out the deck stats quickly. Um, thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you do enjoy these videos, please do comment down below what you want to see in the future. Um, like I said, I love doing these older deck challenges. I probably won't pick up an older deck for a while, just because I'm saving up, like I said. But hey, so it looks like, I don't know if this is updated from the most recent games, but I've had 18 games with 10 wins. So it's still a positive win-loss ratio, so it's still not a bad deck to pick up. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.